Today, we're creating some really useful CarPlay automations. Now, this is the second video of a two-part series, and we're gonna dive a little bit deeper today than we did in the last one. And by the end of it, you're gonna have some really useful shortcuts that you can use on their own or as a part of your CarPlay automations. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy Apple home, smart home with new videos and live streams published every week. So this is part two. In the last video I released, part one gave a good foundation for creating these shortcuts and CarPlay automations that we're talking about today. Very simple stuff we did in the last video, like automatically opening apps or playing certain music when you connect to CarPlay. Feel free to check out that video if you haven't already, or if you're still feeling a little intimidated by all the shortcut stuff, I'll put a link to that up here or down below as well. Big thanks to Econet for sponsoring today's video. Water damage is a huge problem in most places and it's usually not a question of if, but when you'll deal with this. Water damage can destroy your home very fast and repairs are extremely expensive. So adding an automatic water shutoff valve like the Bulldog to your setup could potentially save you thousands of dollars in the event of a water emergency. It doesn't support HomeKit natively, but it's pretty easy to integrate into your setup. They sell a Z-Way version, which is what I use, and that can be integrated into HomeKit through a Z-Wave hub like Homey Pro or Hubitat. They also sell a Wi-Fi version that can be integrated into HomeKit through HomeBridge. And once you do this, if any of my you know, water sensors throughout the house detects water, the Bulldog will immediately shut off the water to the entire house. And this happens even if I'm not home. So the peace of mind that I get with this thing is just incredible. You may also even be able to save some money on your homeowner's insurance when you have a product like this. So definitely check that out. I'll put more information in the links down below. Big thanks to Econet for making such a great product and for sponsoring today's video. Today, I'm gonna walk you through a more advanced shortcut that'll be great for CarPlay automations. We'll go through step by step. And I also have a bonus shortcut that I really love that I'm gonna share with you at the end of this video. Now, just as before, I'll be sure to include links to any shortcuts that we discussed down below in the description if you wanna download them for yourself to play around with or to follow along with today's video. This next one will be great for anybody who, let's say, works at an office and you know with a fairly regular schedule. Let's say you want to send an automatic message to your significant other every time you get in your vehicle to come home for the day. Well, we can do that and we can specify for this to only run between certain hours. Let's say you always leave the office between, I don't know, 4 and 5.30 p.m. And it, this will only run in this specific location, wherever it is you work, and we can set those parameters in here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We'll build this one together to, so you can kind of see how this would work. All right, so first thing we'll do is open up the shortcuts app here on our phone. Let's go ahead and just create a new shortcut. So let's go here and tap new shortcut, rename this leaving work. Okay. Now, first we'll have to get the time and the location because again, we want to make sure this will only run when we connect to CarPlay, uh, when we are at work and between certain hours. You don't want this to run during lunchtime or anything like that. So this will only work at the end of the day between those hours uh, when you are at that location. All right, so let's tap add action. And first let's get our current location. So we'll look for location. Get current location. Next we'll need to get the date. So let's go with get the date. All right. And we'll have to reformat the date in order to uh, get the specific time. Uh, because again, we're gonna kind of use the hours of the day to determine if it's between, let's say, let's go with 4 and 5.30 p.m. That seems like a good time uh, somebody may leave work. So for this, we're gonna go with format. You can look for format date right there. And we can drop down and what I want to do here for this one is we're going to go with date format and we're going to go with custom. Okay, and you can see here the format string. All right, and there's a lot of options you can kind of do. What I'm going to do is just remove all this and we're going to type in capital HH. And that's the hours. So that will just get the hours of the day. Okay. 
because again, yeah, I can't do 5.30 because I did just the hours right there. So we'll just go between uh, four, let's do four and six, okay? That's a good window. And uh, so this will run between four and six when I'm at work, only again, only when I'm at work. So let's look for if, and it automatically pulled in that from there. So if the formatted date from that previous action, now what you have to do here, because we're, we need in, is between. So what we have to do is make sure we're getting the numbers, right, from that. So we're gonna tap on this. See it says text right here. We want this to be numbers. So we wanna be able to get numbers from this. So we're gonna look for number right there. Okay, good to go. Now, if we tap the condition, we'll see. There we go, is between, and we can check is between. Let's go with, so this is gonna be a 24 hour uh, number system, time system when we're doing it this way. So let's see, 4 p.m. would be 1600. So we'll do 16, and 6 p.m. would be 1800, so that would be 18. So we haven't added in the car play part yet. We'll start that, we'll do that trigger later. Right now we're just doing the shortcut that will run, okay? so. We've checked the date or we've checked the time. Now we need to check the location. So I don't typically recommend putting if statements within other if statements, but it is okay to do kind of with caution without getting too crazy. So we're gonna do that in this case. We're gonna check the, the time, if it's a certain time, and then we're gonna check the location, if it's a certain location, and then we'll do our actions, okay? So let's look for another if statement, if action. All right, so I can delete this otherwise. I don't need that. And then let's pull if right in here. So it automatically, again, pulls like the, pulls the data from the previous action. So I'm gonna tap on this and hit clear. And I'm going to tap here and we're going to look for uh, up here, we got the current location. So you'll see that right here. I'm gonna tap on that. So if the current location, and here again, we can, type, we can determine what type of information uh, is being passed through. So uh, I'm gonna tap on this and down here, this is, the, this is what you get with the location action. So instead of that, I'm gonna look for the street, okay? And so this way it's gonna get the street and I'll use the street to determine if I'm at work, all right? So if the street, now I'm gonna look for contains and here you're gonna type the name of your street. So it'll have to match up perfectly whatever the name of your street is, but if the street of your location at work matches this or contains this word, then it will run. So let's just say you work on Whiskey Road, okay? I'll type in Whiskey and I will just leave it at Whiskey because as long as it contains that somewhere in the street name, we'll be good to go, all right? I can, uh, let's see, delete this otherwise. So if, the time is that, it's gonna then check the location. If the time is not between those hours, it's just gonna skip and do nothing, right? So I can run this real quick and show you. Um, yeah, so <laughs> there you go. So you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but it basically just skipped right over this because the current time, if you see right here, 2.20, it is not between 16 and 18 and two o'clock would be 14 right there. So it will skip that. If I change this to, 12, then it will check to see the name of the street. So let me do that. So I don't know if you could see that, but it did check and we're not on Whiskey Road. That's not where I'm at. So anyways, let's go back again. That's what you can kind of do when you're checking um, and kind of troubleshooting these shortcuts. Next, I wanna get my estimated time of arrival that I will take me to get home. I wanna send a nice little message to the wife. All right, so first thing we need to do is get the estimated time for arrival home. So to do that, we're going to just look for driving, get travel time is what we need. So I'll pull that up here. So get driving time from current location to, we need to clear this variable. And here you're gonna to wanna to put your home address, right? I'll just choose one of these. This is not my home, but uh, Caesar's Palace. There we go. So this is gonna be your home, okay? The driving directions from your current location to home. Now we can type in our message. So let's look for message. And we're gonna send a message to whoever you want. In this case will be Caroline, my wife. 
what we're going to do here, we want to customize this message. So I'm going to tap in here and here you can type whatever you want to send in the message. I'm headed home from work. ETA is travel time. So that's getting the travel time from the previous action right there. I'm going to go after that, put our period. Now I can continue my message. Let me know. Let me know if you need anything on the way home. Got to add some love in there when we're texting the significant other. All right, so to recap, we're getting the current location, we're getting the current date, we're formatting the date so that we can say if the current time is between 4 and 6 p.m., if the street is whatever your work street is, then we're gonna text the wife and we're gonna get time, estimated time arrival home um, from work and we're gonna send that to the wife in this custom message. And really that's it for our shortcut. You can test this if you want to by changing some of these things around. So the current time is two. So let's change this to 14. Uh, that way that will fall in between there. And I'm gonna put my actual street here Okay, so now I changed this a little bit just for testing and we're gonna see if it's between this time, if I'm here, which I am, we're gonna send that text message. Let's see what happens. It's checking, checking the drive time. So it's doing all those things and you can see, there we go. So what it did is it said, I'm headed home from work. ETA is one day, six hours, 20 minutes. Of course, this is coming from my current location to Caesars in Las Vegas, so that is, uh, a bit far, but ETA did that properly. It looks good. Let me know if you need anything on the way home. Love you. I could send it right there, but we want to make this even better. We don't want this prompt. We want it to just send automatically every time we get in the car on the way home from work. Um, so to do that, let's tap on this right here. And all you have to do is disable show when run. Now, if I were to run that, it's going to automatically send it. It's not going to give me the pop up and um, we're good to go. Uh, so that will run. I can tap done and leaving work. We can tap on this and it will run right there. Good to go. But again, we want to make this automated. So this is where the car play part comes in. Let's go over to automations. We're going to tap on a new car play um, automation. We do not want it to run after confirmation. We want this to run automatically. Uh, notify when run. We want to keep that off. Tap next. Now here, again, you can choose any of your shortcuts. Let's tap on the new shortcut that we just made leaving work. Boom, it is really that easy. So, you know, we created the shortcut first and then we just did this. So when we connect to CarPlay, it's gonna automatically check my location. It's gonna check the time of day. If I'm at work between four and 6 p.m., it's gonna send that custom text message that we created uh, to the wife. So really cool automation for CarPlay. I think you can really utilize this and tweak this in a lot of different ways. You can use it for different locations, different times of day, things like that to uh, really get some cool automation set up. Now, another one that I created, I'm not gonna walk through step by step because it's uh, it'll this video will take forever, uh, but I will show you real quick. This is one that I created and I will put a link to this below. Um, I'm using this one now for every morning when I get in the car. It's, it's using a lot of the same concepts we just discussed, but this one here, uh, it will check the time much like we did uh, with the last shortcut we just set up, but it's gonna check the time and it's only gonna run this between a certain time of day uh, every morning it, when I connect to CarPlay. And this is really cool because it'll actually give um, a voice prompt and uh, well, let me just show you what happens. So when I connect to CarPlay, it's gonna wait five seconds. That's another tip I should have mentioned earlier. Uh, you may want to add a wait action at the beginning of these CarPlay automations just to give your car time to connect and everything like that. So that may depend on your vehicle, how fast it connects to CarPlay and stuff like that, but that may be something you want to do. Uh, so I did add a wait action here, wait five seconds. And basically it's gonna tell me, you know, uh, my calendar events, or if there are no calendar events on my calendar, then it's gonna get the current weather at my location. What's great about this one is that if you travel a lot, this shortcut, again, I'll put a link to it below, this shortcut will work well no matter where you're at, so you don't have to be at home. But it's gonna get the weather details for your current location and your calendar events, all that stuff, and at the end, it's gonna do this. It's gonna say, good morning, today's date is blah, blah, blah. It currently feels like 
whatever on this current day and city. It also checks for rain and then I have in here uh, if rain is, if the precipitation chance is greater than 60, um, 60 percent, it'll tell me you may want to bring an umbrella. And one thing I didn't do on here that I will do is I'm going to modify this to only run between certain hours. So I'll do that before I upload this video so you have that also in the beginning. And it'll check to see if the time is just between the certain time that you may want to uh, run this so it won't run every time I start the car. Let's fire up the truck and wait for our phone to connect to CarPlay. Good morning. Today's date is January 2nd, 2024. It currently feels like 48 degrees on this Tuesday in Lexington. You can expect a high of 52, a low of 31, and a 0% chance of rain. The first event on your calendar today is Shane Physical Therapy at 6 p.m. Buckle up and drive safe. All right, pretty sweet. And there you have it. Now I know what to expect for my day. I would love to hear some more great CarPlay automation ideas from you guys. Again, I'm still pretty new to CarPlay, so I keep modifying and adding to my automations and shortcuts, but if you have any that work well for you and you don't mind sharing with the rest of us, please drop a comment down below and let us know what automations, shortcuts you have set up with CarPlay. Hopefully we can get some great ideas flowing down there in the comment section. Also remember, I will link the shortcuts that we created today down below in case you wanna download them, tweak them for your setup. If you wanna see how I actually integrated my truck into HomeKit, which can now be used in my HomeKit automations, check out this video right over here. It's pretty awesome. And over here is another video that YouTube thinks you might like. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.